Hey everyone, I'm John Sisson and today we're taking a look at the Sony 20mm f1.8 G series lens. So the 20mm is a wide angle lens created for the Sony E-mount, more specifically the full frame camera bodies like the a7 III that I have in my hand, but can be used on APS-C bodies like your a6100, a6600 and any other APS-C bodies, although the effective focal length will turn it into a 30mm lens. Now this is a lens that is not to be confused with your G Master series, so this is just a G series lens, but in saying that in terms of its optical quality and build, it's very similar to your G Master range. Now in this video, I'm gonna take you through the design of the lens as well as its features, what you can expect in terms of focusing, performance, as well as image quality, which is its main important feature. The 20mm f1.8 has a solid build and is primarily constructed of high quality plastics to keep the weight down. Speaking of weight, it only weighs 373 grams, making it ideal to carry for long periods of time without causing too much strain on your arms if you're intending to use this for vlogging or long hikes. Now in terms of the design, it has an aperture ring. Great thing about this is that if you wanted, you could also have the aperture ring to click or have it silent by switching it on and off on the side of the lens. You also have a custom button where it will act as a focus hold function by default and of course a switch to change from manual to autofocus. It also accepts 67mm filters and comes supplied with a plastic pedal type lens hood. It also has weather seals as evidence on the mount of the lens and while there is no stabilization built into it, if you are using it on a body with stabilization, you will benefit from it too. Focusing was quick and quiet thanks to its two XD linear motors and for a wide angle lens, it is fairly easy to keep things in focus, especially if you are tracking. Okay, all right, Ooh. it's actually a bit cold out here. It's about six degrees at the moment and it is a bit windy. So I apologize if there's any wind noise that you can hear, but basically I am using the 20 mil F1.8 G series wide open. So you can get an idea of what you can expect when you are using this lens for vlogging. Um, I am holding it at arm's length. So no arm extensions or anything like that. No Gorilla Pods. And this is, I guess this is a good lens for vlogging. I will say right off the bat, because it's not too wide to distort myself or I guess whatever else is in the background, but oh, I'm tired. But you also do have that flexibility of having an F1.8 aperture, which is going to be great for low light. And of course, isolating yourself from the background too. So if I change the aperture right now to say F11, you can actually see more of the scene as well as myself as well. But if I go back to F1.8, that's me focused on my face. Oh, and by the way, I am using the Rode Wireless Go microphone. So if you're wondering what that is connected to my cap, I have done this in other videos and I had people asking me what the hell I have on my head or on my, on my hat. And it's actually my microphone. So it's a great mic, I put it linked down below. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is what you can expect. I don't have the, I do have the stabilization on, which is internal. So hopefully that's compensating for a bit of shake in my video, but of course it's not going to replace a gimbal. But what do you think of this focal length for vlogging? I actually think it's pretty decent. And it's not too heavy as well. So what do you think? Now the lens is sharp, especially when stopped down corner to corner. In terms of the colors and contrast, it's similar to the 24mm f1.4, but at a much lower price point, which is a big plus where you only lose a third of a stop compared to the more expensive option. I feel like you're getting good value for money when compared to the 24mm, but not only that, the overall build and characteristics of this lens are fairly similar. This is why I think this will be a popular lens. With a respectable minimum focusing distance of 19 centimeters, it can get fairly close to a subject and with some separation from the background, it can get smooth and out of focus blur. And in my opinion, this isn't too distracting. While there is flare, it's not to a degree where it's overbearing. There is some vignetting and chromatic aberration wide open, but stopping it down will alleviate this issue. Or if you prefer to shoot wide open, you can always correct it in post. There was also some distortion, but it wasn't to a huge degree. Now, I never hesitated taking this lens out with me because it was so light and easy to bring with me on hikes compared to other lenses. And while I love the 24mm f1.4 GM, I would probably recommend this lens more for value for money. But if you want the top of the range when it comes to shooting around this focal length, I would say the 24mm would be the way to go. 
All right, so I honestly think you can't go wrong with a 20 mil f1.8. It's versatile for a lot of things. So anything from just like landscape, portraiture, which is actually a decent lens to use for portraiture, anything from getting background blur from your subject in focus is going to be great. And you know what, you can actually use this for vlogging, especially if you have a full frame camera. If you have a crop sensor camera that you plan to mount this on, I probably wouldn't really recommend it for vlogging, but you know, it is, great for all those sort of things and it's going to be even a great travel lens especially if you intend to just go overseas or just want to shoot everything uh, in terms of its price it is a bit cheaper than the 24 mm f 1.4 g master lens which i personally loved and i pretty much took it nearly everywhere with me when i was traveling last year but since i can't travel this year i'm going out and around sydney but don't be so i guess dismayed or a bit let down that this isn't a G Master lens. In actual fact, having it just a G series lens is fine by me because it's what the images actually bring out. Now, in terms of auto focusing speed, it is pretty fast with two XD linear motors. What that basically means, it's fast, it's quiet, it's accurate when it comes to focusing on something that's moving fast, or even if you're just point to point focusing, it isn't going to be a let down, especially if you are using it for video as well. But yeah, so I love the image quality. I love what it brings out, especially if you're using on the Sony a7 III. And you know what? It's probably even going to shine even more with an a7R4. But that's about it from me. If you have any more questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you already own one, let me know what you think of it. And remember to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe to my channel for more Sony lens reviews and tutorials. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more sample photos and photo updates. And don't forget to take a look in the description down below for more information about this lens as well as affiliate links that do help support the channel. Don't forget to share this out to your friends and family. And until then, happy shooting and thanks for watching. Oh, it is a lens that is made. It is a lens that is made. The 20 mil f1.8 lens is something that I put put. Uh, I am actually filming with the Sony 20 mm 20 mil. I have a usually. I'm so tired.